heard, neither has it entered into hearts of men the good things that God has in store for them that love him and love his appearing. You have to understand the fact that God has prepared a place for a prepared people. So the Bible tells us very clearly, if ye be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Too many times we are so invested in what the world is doing until we can't really get into the presence of God and find out what God's perfect will is for our lives. A lot of times uh, we ought to thank God when he says no. Mm -hmm. I'm reading this book right yes. now. And it's entitled When God Says No. Because a lot of us, we know that God, we can shout and dance. And I mean, and run, run, run a, a, a marathon when God says yes. You got the job. Oh, you're just going in. You know, whatever you've been praying for, you got it. And so we just go and we go to shout and huck it in a bucket. Then we, we have a little problem sometimes when God says wait. Because it, it's, it's not a no, it's not a yes, but it's a wait. So sometimes in the beginning of the wait, we're okay. Because I know what God said, I know what God promised, so I can shout through that too. But can you shout and give God praise when he says no? You know, it's, it's easy to say yes, but you're going to be tested on your yes. You prayed and you asked God to heal somebody. I used to stop going to pray for people in the hospital because it seemed like every time I would go, they would die. So I said, you know what? I better stay out the hospital ministry. It's challenging my faith. Because every time I pray, Lord, heal them, they're dead within three days. So don't y'all invite me to come pray for you. Again. Oh, it, it's just, it would challenge my faith. Because there will be times you're praying and you're asking God to do something and he doesn't do it the way you think he ought to do it. And so it challenges your faith. God does say no to some things. And no is hard to hear and it's hard to accept when all your intentions is good. Lord, just bless me so I can bless somebody else. You know, you are you down at the casino. Lord, let me get a jackpot. The church needs something. Lord, I'm just going to put this number in it. Oh, it's the mega million. Lord, I, there's so much. Bishop needs a whole new church. He needs this. He needs this. And you just got a whole litany of things that you're going to do. That number come out, and it ain't your number. God says no. And what do we do when he says no? The reason we have such a problem with no is because our, uh, our will is not in alignment with him. When we get to the point, glory to God, where we can align our wills with God, we will be able to digest no a little bit better. Yes. 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 Why? Because you will begin to pray just like Jesus prayed. He said, not my will, but your will be done. Yes. And see, a lot of times in our prayer, our will is so strong until we never really consider the fact that God has a will. God does not have a permissive will. He only has one will. And that's his perfect will. There are people that are saying, well, I'm operating in God's permissive will. That's a lie. God is not bipolar. He's not schizophrenic. He's direct. He's intentional in all that he did. He, he didn't have no maybes when he said, let there be. He, he knew exactly what he was going to do. So when we say we're operating in his permissive will, that's not his will. That's your will. I'm doing what I want to do. And that's what happens. And there's the conflict. Because now I'm doing what I want to do, but now I'm praying, Lord, do this for me. Lord, if you do this, you know, you ever heard those prayers? Lord, if you do this, I'll do that. We start bargaining with God. This is not let's make a deal. This is God's way. Or there's no way at all. 
So the Bible says, if ye be risen with Christ, uh -huh. seek those things which are above. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. It's not the house. It's not the car. It's not the money. It's not the fame. Yes, those things are nice. But that should not be your main goal. Yes. And see, people that are going after the carnality, they're, they're having a problem when God says no. Because yes, they say, well, God wants me to be blessed. Yes. Well, that is true. Because the Bible says, brethren, I wish to God that you would prosper yes. and be in good health, yes. even as your soul shall prosper. Yes. But if you look at that scripture and unpack it, yes. the yes. thing that is the most important is at the end. Yes. That your soul will prosper. Yeah. Yeah. Because if your soul prospers, yeah. glory to God, everything else will fall in line. Yeah. And you'll be able to control the blessings that God gives you. Yeah. If you don't have temperance, yeah. what would you do with a million dollars? If you don't have no self-control now and you are on welfare, yeah. how are you going to have self-control yeah. as a millionaire? Yeah. It is God's desire that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Because when everything is in balance, then everything will begin to work together. Because we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and who are the called according to his purpose. Understand that God wants you to act, but you got to want him more. You got to want him more than the thing. Because what happens is the possessions can own you and you not own them. Yes. There are people, and I don't know if you know anybody like this, but I do know a few. They get a little blessing. Yeah. They don't even have to have a whole lot of money. Just get a new outfit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they change. Okay. They act like they don't want to speak. Get a new hairdo, and you know they blinded by the bang. So I don't know what the is. They, they can't see. If you can't handle the little bang coming down in your head, how are you going to handle this nice mansion and the things that God has in store for you? We'll never be able to deal with you. We've got to stay consistent no matter what God blesses us with. Don't ever get to the place where the things become more important than the God that gave it to you. God, I bless your name. So Paul was saying here, if ye be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your desires on things above, not on things of the earth. You, you know, we get really foul when things don't go the way we want it to go. We, we get, we get, we have, we're like spoiled brats. We have temper tantrums yeah. when things don't go our way. Some of us, we even stay home. We, we, we boycott God. I'm not yeah. going to church because I got a problem. That's not the time to be absent. When the enemy is knocking on your door, that's not the time for you to go in hiding. That's not the time for you to run away and get in a cave and think you say You ought to run to the altar because you've got to understand when trials and tribulations come your way, it's an indication, glory to God, that God is getting ready to bless you. God is getting ready to do something in your life, but you've got to go through the test before you can get the victory. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody wants to be thin, but nobody wants to be hungry. All right. Right. And in order to be thin, you got to be hungry sometimes. You got to deny that cake. Those late night snacks. I know what I'm talking about. I want to have that gym body. But it's that comfort food at night. That's the drug of choice. You know, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do none of that crazy stuff. But, but I will eat late at night. Lay down. That's not good. But I want that gym body. So I have to decide which one means more to me. Flexing or eating. And most of the time, eating wins out. Amen. You all can say amen. I'm looking at some of y'all too. Eating has won. You almost go in a coma with Mission Call of Fast. I know. 
bless your name. So we have to make sure that our desire for Christ is stronger than the things of this world. Because the things of this world are temporal. Yes, they are. And only for a certain season. Yes. And, and I heard, uh, I think it was Elder Crenshaw say one time, why should I give up eternal life yeah. for a cheap thrill? Amen. And, and we've got to make sure that we're not investing in the wrong things Amen. and we're going to lose our victory. Yes. Sometimes we invest in the wrong fight and you yes. lose your victory. Right. Sometimes we have the wrong friends yes. and you lose the victory. Yes. Yes. If the person is not going where you want to go in God, then you it's nothing wrong when you're shaking them off. Amen. Oh, Amen. Amen. You have to wear uh, some people, and you, you may not agree with this theology, but there are some people you have to wear like a loose garment. Yes. Yes. Because they will suck you in like a vortex. Yes. They have confusion all around them, and they will draw you right into it. Right before service time, right before prayer time, they'll get you all distracted. So you, all you do is lay on the floor and say, oh, Jesus. Thank you. You're not getting a breakthrough because you're just trying to get your mind back. Because there are some people that, uh, you haven't been around some people and you're, you're just physically tired in your mind after yes, dealing with them. Yes, that, that, yes. Those are the type of people you have to really keep at a distance yes. because they will drain your strength. Yes. Oh my God, I'm yes. sure. Amen. Well, that, that, you know, so set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth, for we are dead. Ye are dead. Ye are dead. And your life is hid with Christ yeah. in God. Yeah. If you were really dead, then what people said about you, it won't matter to you. If you're really dead and you're walking dead, oh my God, you're walking in the dead zone. It won't matter who's rolling their eyes at you. It won't matter who's staring at your shout. It won't matter who's judging you because you're dead. Right. Right. Dead right. men have no opinion. That's right. Woo. You can tell it. You, can, you, you ever been to a funeral? Yes. The, I've seen the, the, the undertaker come and, you know, he comes here. We've had a couple of funerals here. And if you get here early enough, you'll see him straighten the person out, yeah. move their little hands around, and, and yeah. certain of them. They don't say stop. <laughs> they don't say take your hands off of me. You can walk up to them and kiss them all you want to. They're not going to move. They just, yeah. You just kiss them. They just, they just take it in because yeah. they're dead. dead. And if we're going to be dead in Christ, there are things that the enemy does. The reason he continues the same attack, 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 the same thing over and over again is because you keep giving him a reaction. If you stop reacting, he'll stop attacking you in that manner. If he knows, oh God, every time I tickle you, you're going to laugh. He's going to keep tickling you because he's looking for a reaction. And see, what's the, problem? the problem is we're defeated because we're emotionally driven. Dead men have no emotions. I've never seen a dead, angry man. They might have a frown on their face. They, it don't look like anger. It just looks like they're frowning. They, they, you can pay a little extra money and they'll put a smile on their face. They will. Yeah. They have more tissues that will put a smile on them. Oh, mama was just smiling. You don't know how mama looked before she got there. <laughs> oh, she just was so smiling. I know she's before the angels right now. That's just a shell. And, and we just, you know, you can make them do whatever you want them to do. Because they're dead. Yes. Now we're supposed to be dead, my God, to the world. Yes. You, you, you should not, you, you, uh, every time somebody good looking walks in the room, wow. male or female, my Lord, come on now. here's your head going. Come on now. Come on. Come on, Bishop. They don't even join the church good come if you on. try to find them. Ooh, ooh, hey, Mary, I, I don't see a ring. You just did fine. You're dead. Why are you looking? Right, right. Oh, my Lord. And see, as long as we feed our flesh, our flesh.
flesh is going to ask for more. And whatever you feed, that is the thing that will grow. If you keep feeding it, it's going to grow. That's why we've got to ignore the things that the enemy bring our way. A lot of times the enemy gets the victory because we've given him an audience. People that, that a bully that, that wants to you know intimidate folk, they don't pick a fight when it's just two people. No. They wait till there's a crowd. Right. So they can have somebody ample yes, on, right. and then they have a big old crowd that's going to that's gonna make it big. Uh-huh. But if it's just one-on-one, there's some people right now that if you went to the one-on-one, they would cower down because they yes, would know what to do. Yes, because they, they don't have an audience. You right. strip Amen. them of their Amen. audience. Right. And that's what the enemy does. He wants to get you to the point where you blow your testimony, when you blow your shout, when you blow glory to God, everything glory to God that you have. Why? Because he wants to destroy you. The Bible says in John 10, 10, you know this one, he coming to kill, steal, and to destroy. But I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. The thief cometh but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He wants to destroy your life. He's yeah. not your friend. Right. And a lot of times we say, oh, well, you don't want me to have no friends. No, you have to have friends that are like-minded. Yeah. 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 Friends yeah. that are not fans. There's a difference between a friend and a fan. Yeah. A fan yeah. loves everything you do. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You can talk about the kids now and, and talk about Beyonce. Oh, I love Beyonce. Oh, you don't know nothing about Beyonce, but you just love her. You're a fan. That's right. And a lot of times we're looking for fans in our lives rather than a friend. A true friend will tell you about yourself. A true friend will tell you you have some faults. You know, a true friend, uh, Sister Middleton, is not going to let me walk around with a booger hanging out my nose. But a fan will just let it walk on by. Ain't going to say nothing to you. You messing up. You're praising the Lord with everybody, and it's shaking in the wind, and nobody said nothing. But a true friend say, uh, you need to get that. There's something there. Yeah. Right. And so we have to understand, glory to God, thank you, Jesus, that a friend is different than a fan. And in the flesh, we don't have the, the ability to discern who's really in our corner and who we really need to have in our corner. A lot of times it's the people you don't like is the people you really need to have around you. Because that agitates you and it provokes you to do better. Somebody that's just going to side with you and say, sis, yeah, everybody hates you. Oh, you just, you know, just, yeah, look at them rolling out. They're sitting there and they, they're just validating your feelings. Right. I need somebody to see for me when I cannot see. That is the whole point of leadership. You need a pastor that can see for you when you can't see for yourself. That's why all in in, in my church, I don't go for the secret romances and secret dating. You got this secret boyfriend or girlfriend, and, and then you falling in love, and now you want to bring them to me now. Bring them before you have emotions. Bring them before you get caught up. So that somebody can put a spiritual eye on them and say, you know, is this the person for you? Right. Because what happens a lot of times, when you get your emotions involved, the dead man gets up. Amen. You're no longer dead to the things of Christ, to the things of the world. You become alive to everything. And understand, emotions will lie to you. Yes, My emotions lie to me all the time. That's why if you're angry, you should never make a decision. Right. Don't, don't make decisions right. when you're angry. I call them what we call halt moments. A halt moment is H-A-L-T, hurt, angry, lonely, tired. Those are the triggers that will make you walk away from God. Those are the triggers that will cause you to sin. Look at it in your life. Amen. When you're hurt, when you're angry, mm-hmm. if you're lonely, mm-hmm. and if you're tired, you're going to do things to comfort those needs. Amen. Because, and what happens is we become reckless right. when we allow our emotions to lead us. Right. Because your emotions are not led by the Spirit. No, no. They that are led by the Spirit 
are the sons of God. You're, you you angry. Your anger is never telling you come in the house and come in the church, get on your knees and speak in tongues for 30 minutes. Sure. Mm -hmm. No, I want to get them. I want to get her. Yeah. I want to get him. Yeah. You know, he did something to me. I, I can't wait till I get him. Because those emotions start to boil up. And the more you talk about it to people, guess what? The bigger it becomes. Amen. We never go to God with it. Lord, you know sister so-and-so did me wrong, and I need you to help me, God, because I want to punch in her face. You don't tell God that. You tell somebody else that's going to go with you to the fight. That's part of your crowd. Well, you know, that's just sidebar. But it says... If we're dead and your life is hid with Christ, when Christ, who is our life, mm -hmm. shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Amen. I'm looking for the day, glory to God, when I will see him as he is and I will be, glory to God, so, so uh, in, in, enlightened by the wise of my life. Right. Why did I go through this? Why did you say no for this? There's going to come a day when those answers are going to come. Yes. But you got there are some things that God won't show you because it's on a need-to-know basis. Mm -hmm. If you knew what God had in store for you, you would shout. But if you knew what you had to go through to get to it, you would th have second thoughts. Yes. You mean I got to go homeless mm -hmm. in order to get a mansion? Ooh. You mean I got to lose my job? mess up my credit and all this kind of stuff in order to get here where God wants to have some of us would say no because we can't see beyond what we have physically right. Amen. glory to God well uh, let's look at uh, Colossians chapter number 2 and verse number 12 2 and 12 just skip over one page it says Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who have raised him from the dead. Mm -hmm. The 13th verse says, and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, have he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, yes. blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of any holy day or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humi humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he have not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. We have to understand, living holy, is going to cost you something. Yes. Amen. Uh, Colossians 2 and 20 says, Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are the to perish with the using after the commandments and the doctrines of men. Third, 23rd verse, which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will, worship, and humility, and neglecting the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. That's a whole lot that Paul was talking about. But he's talking about being dead to the world, yet alive. See, that's the mystery, that I can walk being dead to the world, but yet alive in Christ. Because when your affections are on the things above, the things that are around us won't have the power to defeat us. There are some people that's defeated and they self-sabotage simply because they're not walking 
in the flesh, in the spirit. Let's go to Romans chapter number 12. Very familiar. You all know this scripture. I hope. Romans 12 and 1. It says, I beseech ye therefore, brethren. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. By the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. So this is how you can be dead and living at the same time. I'm dead to the things of the world, but I'm alive to the things of God. Now, that requires some common sense in order to be dead and living at the same time. What do you mean? Well, if I'm dead to the things of the world, but I'm alive to Christ, I go to work. You go to a nine to five. You have to have enough common sense to know you're dead, but yet alive to God. But that doesn't mean you sit at your desk and speak in tongues for now. That doesn't mean everybody that passed by your, your desk, you jump over with a bottle of oil and start anointing them. You've got to learn, glory to God, how to operate in your gift. Don't you know you can pray for somebody without putting your hands on them? You can be more effective in praying for somebody without putting your hands on them. Because your hands is just a point of contact. And if you're really not prayed up, there's some people you should not touch. You know what you got. You don't know what they have, so why are you touching them? The Bible says lay hands on no man's son. You got to be very careful with these laying on of hands. Because you, you lay in hands and you, oh, you go home and you wonder why you're thinking about suicide. You never thought about it in your life. You wonder why you're looking at, the, 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 at people that, you know, normally you would never have looked at. It's because you've transferred something and you didn't know how to get rid of it. It came back. And you opened the door and accepted it. Come on. We've got to be so careful, yes. glory to God, that how we balance and navigate being dead, but yet alive. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. How do I present a living sacrifice? Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Here we go. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind needs an overhaul. My mind needs an overhaul. There are some things, glory to God, when you become new in Christ, you should not even allow yourself to think about those things. So that's why sometimes reminiscing is not a good thing. You know, you go and you start reminiscing what you did in your past and how you did it. You're glorying in that thing that God delivered you from. Your past should literally make you sick. Things you've done should make you want to throw up. Because if you get to the point where you become more like God, sin becomes disgusting to you. That's how you live holy. But see, if I compromise with my sin, if I still couple myself with my sin, I'm not doing it, but I'm enjoying the people that's doing it. That's compromising. And I know this is a hard gospel because we're in the 21st century now. You know, some uh, folks say, oh, I can, you know, I can do this and be saved. I can do There's too many liberties, glory to God, in the body of Christ until the church is losing its power, it's losing its luster, and it doesn't even look like the church ought to look. God is coming back for a clean church. He's coming back for a body that's clean. Oh my God, bless your name. And we can't be saints on Sunday Come on. and cussing on Monday. Come teach on. us, sir. Amen. Teach us. We can't do that. That's Glory right. to God. How can bitter and sweet come out the same fountain? Oh, I grew up on this stuff. It hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. We've got to understand when we get around folk that it's okay for them to do that. Mm. What happens is it becomes, we begin to get common. Yes. Mm -hmm. With the enemy. Mm -hmm. And see, 
I don't know about you all, but I can watch TV and curse words will come up and it, it alerts my spirit. Yes. 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 I, I can't watch it too yes. long because yes. you know, it's yes. hey, yes. too much. Yes. 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 Nowadays, anything you watch, they're yes. going to drop a, a yes. curse word yes. in there. Yes. So you, you, you don't shut it, your whole TV off, but if, 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 if it comes up, you know, okay, I see one, you know, okay, there's another one, okay. Okay, now they're going in, so okay, it's time to turn the channel. Yes. Not I'm invested, I don't watch this for 30 minutes, so I need to see what's going to happen. No, if it's going to infect your spirit, there's something you got to flee from. Yes. I don't need to know the end of that, because that's trying to destroy what's on the inside of eating. Because those kind of stuff, when you digest it, it goes in. It's not what goes in a man that defiles him. It's what comes out of it. And if you don't have nothing to fight it, once it gets in you, you get mad enough, it's going to come out of you. And you're going to start regurgitating what you heard on that television. You're going to start regurgitating what your family members and people that's been hanging around you have been saying. Oh, glory to God. I don't know about you, saints of God, but I'm still fearful of God. There are certain things that I don't want to ever lose the fear of God. I don't ever want to get to the point where, you know, uh, it's just God. And the, the, the world is getting to the point, uh, it's just God. And, and there are some things, glory to God, I get in certain company. I'm afraid that the ceiling is going to drop on us. Because you live in so wicked. How can you do that? You, Lord Jesus. I'm looking for the ceiling to drop because I have the fear of God. Oh my God. I'm always aware that God is around. You know, I don't care about you looking at me because I'm not going to care less. It's God that's sitting high and looking low. A lot of times we're hiding from each other when we should be hiding from God. God goes with you at home when nobody's looking. And you can Anybody can act holy when they're around holy people. It's what you do when you close that door and you get in that house. Do your children know you're saved? Do your dog know you're saved? Do your cat know you're saved? Do your neighbors know you're saved? They hear all kinds of language coming out your house. And you got the nerve to come out on a Sunday morning with your big old church hat on. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. They're wondering what apartment you came out of. I know Lucy was over there last night and she was, she was laying it out. Thanks, let me tell you. How you live at home. Yes, yes. is exhibited yes. in your worship. Yes, yes. There's some people, I don't know, you know, we do the praise and worship thing, and it's like we become cheerleaders, yes. trying to get you to praise God, yes. trying to get you to just lift your hands, yes. trying to just sing along with us, just, you know, do what we do. Yes. Some of you can't do it. Why, praise leader? The reason they can't do it is because they're not doing it at home. Jesus. Amen. You know, Amen. you've got to live a lifestyle, yeah. not just in the pews, but yeah. you've got to live it at home. Yeah. This is just your filling station. Yeah. Yeah. We're like, imagine yourself being an automobile. Mm -hmm. The automobile, every now and then, when it gets to a certain point, has to stop and get some gas. Because yeah. yeah. if it don't get no gas, yeah. it's going to run out. Yeah. It's going to be on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. That's how you are spiritually. Yeah. You come to church to get filled up so that you can go out into the world and do what you need to do so that, you know, by the end of the week, yeah, I need another touch. I need to go back and get some get filled up again. We ought to live every day like it was the first time. Do you, let me just see a hand by your hands. You remember when you first got the Holy Ghost. How many of you remember the first time you got the Holy Ghost? The first time you felt the presence of God. Well, wasn't it sweet? Yes. Oh my God. Some of us, we couldn't sleep all night. Yes. Some of us spoke your tongues all night. Yes. Some of us smiled and, and we, we threw away, we went home and just started cleaning up stuff we needed yes. to get out of the house. Yes. Yeah, you did it. Yes. What happened to Zion? Yes. Zion woke up. Yes. Oh my God. Zion's dead man got up and started walking and took and taking charge. Yes. 
We've got to crucify this flesh. Yeah. 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 We've got to keep this flesh dead. Yeah. dead. Because if it's not dead, it's going to talk. Yeah. It's going to have desires. Yes. It's not going to want to praise God on Sunday. So it's going to come here and sit and say, just be glad I'm here. Mm. <laughs> First of all, I owe God everything. Because if mercy would have ran out on me, I don't know about you, but if mercy would have ran out on me, I wouldn't be here today standing here in this little black suit. You would not have seen me. Because I would have been under the under the ground. I probably would have been dust by now because it was so long ago. So many things I've done. But yet it's still God had mercy on me. So when I come into the house of God, that's an opportunity to say, Lord, I, I appreciate you. Oh my God, that you allow me to live to see another day. I'm so grateful. Do you think about where you've been and what you've done and how God delivered you out of the muck and the mire? And because of that, I owe him prayer. It doesn't matter what your past was. The fact is that he picked you up and he cleaned you up. Oh my God, he put you on a path for straight. That doesn't mean I do everything right. The Bible says all have sinned. They fall short of the glory of God. First of all, your first nature is not to live holy. That's against your nature. You're teaching yourself how to live holy. So you have to allow for room for error. Yes, that will, that will happen. But we don't practice sin. We don't plan. Oh, girl, if you wait till Friday when I get paid, I can't wait to go to the club and do this and that. We don't do that. Sin, your sins should be an oops sin. Not, I put it on my calendar and I planned it. But we're going to meet at the Holiday Inn and, and I'm, I'm going to be with his wife uh, on this particular day, at this particular time, that, that's intentional. Right. That's willful. Yes. And it happens in the body of Christ. Right. The, the, the saints is the horniest people in the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but I had to say it. <laughs> we ought to stay on our knees, stay yes. on the Lord. Yes. Because we got some dirty minds sitting in the pew. Yes. Right. How do you know you got dirty minds passing in the pews? Because you, you see how the sisters and the brothers, they check each other when they come to church. Yeah, oh, you're dressed too short. Oh, your cleavage. Oh, you're you, you need to put your mind on God. Because if your mind was on God, you wouldn't know what my cleavage look like. You so busy looking at me till you can't look at him. Oh, my God. I know I should have said that. Your hair color. That's your business. I like it. <laughs> I don't like the haircut. I've got people that, that uh, oh, I don't like the haircut. I don't like the hair like that. It's all right. Don't worry about it. It grows back. Yeah. It's hair. Yeah. We just we just messed up over stuff that's temporary. First of all, it's all going yeah. back to the dust. Right. Right. Glory to God. I've been to funerals. Back to the funeral again. <laughs> and I've seen saints laid out. That never wore a stitch of makeup their whole life. But then you get to the funeral, you sure that sister so and so? She looked good. She looked better dead than she did. You know, you know, you look at But that body is not going to heaven. So it don't matter what you put on it, because it's dead. It's going back to the dust. Same token in the natural with you and I. It shouldn't really matter what you have. You ought to be saved enough. Glory to God. That what you put on is saved. It's holy. It's delivered. Because when you become like him, you want to cover your glory. Not expose your glory. You can tell where people are based on how they respond. You can tell. You know how you can tell confused people? Because they're always changing something. Some yes. They look like they're total different people. Yes. You, you came in one Sunday, you look like Diana Ross. The next Sunday, you came in, you look like Shaka Khan. The next Sunday, you look like Little Mama. You know, you're just going in. You're just changing the looks. You're going over and over. And the next Sunday, you come in, you look 
like Donald Trump. I don't know what's wrong with that. It's confusion. When you have the spirit of God on the inside of you, glory to God, thank you, Jesus, you remain consistent. It's the enemy that wants you to be confused and jacked up. Because he's coming after your sanity. I will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. So, Romans, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How many of you know we need a mind transplant? We need to put on the mind of Christ. Because if you put on the mind of Christ, instead of picking at folk, you'll start loving folk. Instead of trying to pick people apart, you'll start to love them to life. Uh, the, the one thing that we do, and I want us to get away from this, because it really came as a slave mentality. Uh, slaves were always in the business of pointing out failures in others. Yeah. Right? So that they would look good yeah. in the master's eye. That's right. Take it back. But if we become more like Christ, love covers yes, a multitude of faults. <laughs> so we've got to understand, you don't know what it took for a person to come from their house. Please say that, sir. Say it one time, Lord you Jesus. You don't know the hell they had to walk uh, through uh, just uh, to get here. Uh, and to walk through all of that and then come here right. and catch hell. Right. That's just too much hell on earth. Too much. When you come into the house of God, you're coming to get filled, yes. to get healed, to get restored. Yes. We used to have greeters at the at the house, at the church, and they would just welcome you in. I don't care what you was going through, it would just melt it away. Yes. Now, we got people that stare you down. Yes. And you better not say praise the Lord to them. <laughs> you might get your head handed to you. Right. Where have we went? Where do we make that wrong turn? Right, right. The Bible says, with loving kindness have I drawn you. Yeah, how many people are drawn to you based on the love you show? Just, you know, think in your mind. Think of, when was the last time somebody said to you, you're just so loving and kind? Yes. I've heard it before, but have you ever heard somebody say to you, yes. not just people you like, right, right, right. because we can be yeah. nice to people yeah. we like, right, right. it's the stranger, the one you don't know, right. the one that don't look like you, right. the one that don't smell like you, right. the one that don't do things like you do. Right. Come on, I only like people that look like me. I like robots. Yeah. Mm. Somebody that's just totally opposite than, than you. When have you extended love to someone that's just has is nothing like you. Right. You never know where your blessing is gonna come from. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we, we judge people, we think we be nice to people we think got money. Yeah. Okay. Watch it in church. <laughs> people that come and they put on this big show and you think they got a whole lot of money, everybody nice to them. But the ones that come in with a bunch of bags, all right, all right. You know, they got paper bags, shopping bags, yeah, and they just coming in looking like a little roughed up. We, we, we want to sit them in the back, sit yeah, them to yeah, the side, yeah. keep our eye on them. Yeah, right. you, you never know what a millionaire looks like. Go ahead. Because there's some people that's walking in the street right yeah. now, yeah. got tons of money, yeah. but they don't look like it. Right. So that's why the Bible says, be careful how you entertain strangers. Because some have entertained angels unaware. And we talk about favor, God's favor, and the favor of God is upon your life. And oh, I thank him for my favor. But if I'm never kind enough to receive the favor, I'll never know the favor that's on my life. Because as you sow seeds of kindness, as you sow seeds of love, yeah. guess what? It's going to come back to you. Yeah. Yeah. And all them evil leans and all that stuff you've been giving out, guess what? It's coming back. Yeah. And you're going to, you, and it don't come out the way you give it out. No. Because a lot of times we think, oh, I'm going to sow it from, I'm going to get it from this direction. Yeah. God doesn't always give you no, the way you sow. No. I sowed it this way. 
And I think it's, you know, when I, I think I covered all the bases, and it's going to come from a whole That's different right. source. Yes. That's why we got to be very careful right. how we respond yes. and how we conduct ourselves. Because yes. renew yes. your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Yes. As we look at Colossians, the purpose of Paul writing Colossians, Paul, the immediate occasion of the Colossian letter was, number one, to visit the report of Ephroditus, the founder and the pastor of the church to Paul, and then to return the return of Onesimus. You all know Onesimus? He was the runaway slave uh, that got converted by Paul. Paul told him to go back. Go back to the Right, because he ran from his master because he thought that his master wasn't treating him well. So he was on the run. But Paul, once he got saved, he needed to go back and get everything squared away. And Paul said, whatever he owes, whatever has happened, count it to my charge. And he went because when you're transformed, yes. you don't mind going back. Right. Yeah. Right. When you have a renewed mind, right. it don't take nothing off of you to say, I'm sorry, or please right. forgive me. Yes. I apologize. Yes. Yes. And some of us won't say, I'm sorry. Won't say. We'll say, I apologize. Mm. Please forgive me. But I won't say I'm sorry because I'm not sorry. There's nothing sorry about me. That whole attitude is sorry. Yes. 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 We got to understand it's just the word. Don't get caught up on the word. That's that pride. That sorry is cutting that pride. When you say I'm sorry, you're cutting pride all the way out the picture. I, please forgive me. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry if I offended you. I'm sorry. If I hurt your feelings, I'm sorry. If I misspoke, I'm sorry. If I was a little harsh, I'm sorry. You know, I'm going through some stuff. And, and we, we, you get a pass for that. Because yeah. all of us go through some stuff. Yeah. Sometimes, you, you know, you're a little gruff. You come yeah. through the door, you're a little you ruffled. Your feathers has been yeah. ruffled coming yeah. through the yeah. train and, the, right. you know, all that kind of stuff. The traffic and all that. We understand that. Amen. But you gruff every day. Every day. Yeah. You need another dip in the Holy Ghost. Because yeah. the Holy yeah. Ghost will sweeten you up. Yes, yes. Yes. How many of you like sweet tea? Y'all like sweet tea? Don't drink, it. don't drink it. But do you like sweet tea? Yeah. yeah. Have you ever had tea without sugar in it? Yeah. It's nasty, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's how some of us is when we come through the door. We like tea without sugar. All right. And then you're mad because nobody wants to sit next to you. Why we want to sit next to you? You've been mean and hateful. Love will draw you. Oh, my, my, my. Well, I'm going to get out of there. So, <laughs> he also wrote the purpose of the letter was to strengthen and to confirm the Colossian church, to warn them about the refute of particular false doctrines. And this was the purpose of his writing, Colossians, which is where we started. And so he began to let them know that Stop being like Israel, because Israel's problem was they kept looking to the left and to the right. Yeah, right. They wanted to be like other nations. Mm -hmm. They wanted to mimic others. They weren't happy being who they were. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to be happy yeah. being who you are. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to be satisfied, satisfied with what God made you yeah. be. Yeah. Stop comparing yourself you. to other folks. Yeah. Amen. Stop comparing your looks uh, to amen. other people. Amen. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. And the reason I can preach about it is because I had to teach myself that. Yes. I was constantly comparing myself to other preachers, comparing myself to this one and that one. I, I, I should have did this a little bit better. I should have sung this a little differently. You know, you, you start beating yourself yes. up. Yes. But then I had to yes. learn. This is what God gave me. Right. I'm not going to spit on what God gave me right. trying to be like somebody else. Yeah. Woo! And when you get to the point, glory to God, when you begin to love you, it's a free place. It's a free place because I'm not looking for approval by man. I'm not looking for somebody else to say, you did a good job. I can walk out and say, God, I thank you because you blessed me. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. That's when you really become 
free. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You really want to know freedom. Freedom will let you not really take somebody shopping with you. Because a lot of times we take people with us because we want their opinion. Right. What do you think of this? Mm -hmm. And if they're your friend, they'll tell you, you know, you need a size larger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that color doesn't go with you. Right. Right. You know, that'll help you out. But then there's some you take with you. They want you to look like those yeah. on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> you need to get that just a little tighter. It's, it's, it's a little too loose. You, no. Don't you want to feel it? You know, you know they, they just, yeah. those are the ones you got to watch out for. Yeah. Them haters. Yeah. The, haters. Yeah. the secret haters. Yeah. The secret haters. Yeah. And see, what happens is when you become satisfied with yourself, you will take the Holy Ghost shopping with you. Oh, yes. yeah. You'll look in the mirror yeah. and the Holy Ghost will say yes, yes. yes. or no. Yes. See, the problem is Amen. the Holy Ghost is not just for Sunday. No. Yes. It's no. a church. No. The Holy Ghost will lead you and guide you into all truth. Yes. Whether on your job, whether in your home, yeah. whether in the street, yeah. whether in the church, yeah. the Holy Ghost should be with you at all times. Yeah. It's like that commercial. They said, I think it was American Express. Don't leave home without yeah. it. Right. It's one of those credit yeah. cards. Yeah. Don't leave home without the Holy Ghost. Amen. Take it with you to every Amen. situation. Because yeah. you're going to need it. Yeah. And, and make sure it's ready, armed yeah. and loaded. Because yeah. if yeah. you don't, let that Holy Ghost lead and guide you. You'll find yourself saying things, yes. thinking things mm -hmm. yes. you're not supposed to think. Mm -hmm. Especially you drivers in here. Mm -hmm. You need the Holy Ghost behind you. Yeah. Because <laughs> you know, we shouldn't be behind you in a caravan of, of Christian folk. And you driving, don't know nobody behind you. And you just throwing everybody the bird. And you just flipping <laughs> floats all over the place. And you just a rage, run, roll, wow. rage runner on the road. No. The Holy Ghost should drive smooth too. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we're in a rush. But you should not allow the, 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 your spirit to take a back seat. Yeah. Always let the Holy Ghost lead you first. You'll never come out wrong. People will say, well... You just, you know, just take your time all the time. Why don't you rush in and just do, no. Sometimes you got to wait. Wait. Because haste will make waste. That's Amen. not a scripture, but it's the same. Yeah. It's true. If we allow patience, the Bible says let patience have a perfect work yeah. in you. Because when you are patient enough to wait, patient enough to let the Holy Ghost lead, mm -hmm. then you won't live a life with regrets. Right. You won't have to live a life saying, I'm sorry all the time. Right. You won't have to eat humble pie all the time. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you're allowing the Holy Ghost to lead. The dead man is staying dead. He has to stay dead if you're going to be victorious in this life. Amen. Romans chapter number 6 and 4. And my time is running out. Romans 6 and 4. Now, I know we normally go to 8, but I may run out before 8. All right? So when the Holy Ghost stop, I'm going to stop. That's the best. That's the best. <laughs> Thank you, Aunt Diane. <laughs> Romans chapter 6 and verse number 4. It says, therefore, we're buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Do you realize that baptism is symbolic of death? You're burying the old man, the man, the body of sin is being destroyed in the liquid grave. And you're supposed to rise a new creature. Yes. A lot of times, people are taking the baptism for uh, just to dip in the pool. Mm -hmm. I'm just so hot, I just want to cool off. And they dip in the pool. Or you, uh, you get in the baptism pool, and you don't really understand the principle of baptism. Right. And then you have the people that fight. Well, did you go down in Jesus' name? Or did you go down in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost? Or did you go in the name of Jesus Christ and the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost? <laughs> you know, what, what, how did they baptize you? 
when you know the principle of what baptism is all about, hey my God, you won't trip over the name. You whatever, just like when Peter, when Peter was at the the the, uh, the Last Supper, and Jesus said, "If I wash thee not," because he was washing the people's feet. All right. Mm -hmm. He said, Lord, you can't wash my feet. Mm -hmm. You God, you can't, you can't do this. He said, if I wash thee not, you have no part with me. He said, Lord, not only my feet. Come on now. I want you to give me a bath. Yeah. My head, my head. Yeah. Yeah. Wash me, Jesus. Because he wanted a part yeah. of him. Yeah. When you really have your affection set on things above, you won't trip over names. Hey, I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. Yeah. When you know the principle, mm -hmm. I'm being buried with him yes. by water baptism yeah, yeah, yeah. to rise a new creature. Yes. That means that lion and that cheat and all those things that I used to have, it's in the grave. Yes. Oh my God. And I'm walking in newness. Yes. Oh my God. And that means my mind has to be transformed. Yes. yes. That transformation is really important. Yeah. And transformation for some doesn't happen overnight. Never yeah. Yeah. Transformation is a daily thing. Yeah. Yeah. Some of you were lucky enough to not open enough doors that you didn't need, you know, a couple of days of transformation. Hallelujah. Some of you didn't open many doors and say you was, was just a you know, you was a Baptist symbol. So you didn't really have a whole lot of stuff to, you wasn't a drug addict, you didn't drink, you didn't sleep around, you just was good. You just needed to be saved. So you didn't open no doors. But then there were some of us that we opened doors that we should not have opened. We tasted some things we should not have tasted. And that taste, you don't, you don't get amnesia when you get the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. I wish there was a, a Holy Ghost amnesia where you could just forget the world and forget everything. Right. Right. That's why that transformation yeah. got to take place every day. Yeah. You got to put it under the blood. Yeah. You got. That's why some of us shout more than others because we were saved and we were forgiven more than others. Right. That's why you can't judge somebody's praise until you know what they've been through. You can't judge somebody's shout until you understand where they came from. Some came from the hell. Hell. They came from the gutter. Some of us came, glory to God, out of some low places. And guess what? You don't look like what you've been through. You don't look like where you've been. Why? Because the Holy Ghost came upon you. And it gave you some power. Can we just give God a praise for the Holy Ghost on tonight? Come on, praise him for the Holy Ghost. Praise him that he saved you. Praise him that he delivered you. Praise him that he set you free. Woo! I give him praise. I may not have been through what you've been through. You may not have been through what I've been through. But guess what? We all came through the blood. And because of that, I've got to give God some praise on tonight. Come on, can you just begin to put your hands together and give God some praise? That he kept me. And he never left me. Come on, that's right. Let's put our hands together and give God some praise on tonight. I'm done. Come on, give God some praise.